right, so yesterday we started off by graphing. We did vertical shifting and stretching. Now today we're going to look at some different transformations of changing the cycle length, so changing that period length, and doing lateral shifts, doing horizontal shifts. So reminder of all of our information, the period, the length of one cycle, is found by doing 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b, and the interval is how much is each tick mark. So you're always going to break whatever that period is into four equal pieces. The amplitude, which we dealt with yesterday, does our stretching and our shrinking. And that's also going to cause us to reflect. So the A is going to determine the orientation, that's whether or not it's reflected, and the amplitude of your graph. The K value is the vertical shift, and the H value is the horizontal shift. So the same general form that we saw yesterday, you've got your A, your B comes before multiplied by the X, horizontal always inside the parentheses, vertical always outside the parentheses. Now, if you haven't, I would go back and remind yourself the general form of sine and the general form of cosine. It is really important that you know what sine and cosine look like differently without any transformations. So as we look at our given information, our A value is 1, your B value is 2, there's no H, and there's no K. So your period is going to change this time. So we've got 2 pi divided by 2, which means the length of one cycle is going to be pi. Then we take that period and we divide it into four equal pieces, so each tick mark is going to go up by one fourth pi. Our amplitude is our A value, which is just 1, which means there's a distance of 1 between each level. There's no H, there's no K, which means there's no horizontal shift, and there's no vertical shift. So we use our period and our interval to set up our cycle, always broken down into four pieces. We're going by one-fourth each time. So one-fourth pi, one-fourth plus one-fourth is one-half pi, plus one-fourth is three-fourths pi, plus one-fourth is pi. So the distance of one cycle is going to be pi instead of two pi. And the exact same on the other side. So we've got a negative one-fourth pi, a negative one-half pi, a negative three-fourths pi, and a negative pi. Our amplitude is one, and we're not doing any vertical shifting. So we've got our graph all set up. Again, we pay attention to sine. We think about where does sine start. Remember, sine is always going to start at zero. So I start at zero, zero. I go through my transformations. This set up the graph. Zero times one, still zero. No lateral shift, no vertical shift. So my starting point here is going to be at zero, zero, which is the middle of your wave. So because of the amplitude of one, our top level is going to be at one. The middle level is at zero and the bottom level is at a negative one. So again, this is your amplitude of one. There's a distance of one between each level. Sine starts by going up, it hits the top, bounces to the middle, to the bottom, bounces off the bottom, back to the middle. So here is one cycle of our sine equals two x. Remember, we have to continue that pattern until I hit the bottom, middle, top, middle. Don't forget that you need to have these arrows on the end of your graphs, indicating that that relationship is going to go forever and ever and ever. Now, you may have looked back at your sign graph from yesterday and thought to yourself, how does this look any different? Really, this does not look different 
than the sine of 1x when you label it this way. Because remember, we are creating our scales. So we went from 0 to pi. Yesterday, we were going from 0 to 2 pi. So just a quick little sketch up here. A normal cycle without any changes goes to 2 pi. So one cycle of a normal pi graph going up to 1, down to negative 1, is going to look like this, starting point at 0, 0. What we did is we changed the length of one cycle. So instead of going from 0 to 2 pi, we only went to 1 pi. So we went up, down, back, up. So although you can't see how it's different here because we labeled it from 0 to pi instead of 0 to 2 pi, so it essentially looked the same. What we did by changing the period, we shrunk it horizontally, creating the distance between start to finish. It's a smaller area. So again, it, you don't see it over here just because we labeled and we set up our x-axis, but it is different. All right, our next one, we've got cosine of x plus pi over 2. Our a value is 1. Our b value is 1. Now we have an h value. Don't forget, it's inside of parentheses, so it's the opposite of what we think. No number outside, so our k is going to be 0. So 2 pi divided by b. This time we're not going to change our period. Remember last time we changed it so the length of our cycle was smaller. The amplitude is still 1. Now we have a lateral shift which is that h value which is going to go left pi over 2. Make sure you tell me the direction that you're going and how much. There was no k so there's no vertical shift. We set this up so we're going once again, all the way to 2 pi. And we go on negative 2 pi. And we haven't changed our amplitude, so we're going up to 1, down to negative 1. We look at what function we start with. So we start with cosine. We go through our transformations in the order they come. So the period interval is what we've already used to set up x. So then we go to the amplitude. Cosine normally starts at 1. And we multiply 1 by 1. We're still at 1. But then I'm going to go left pi over 2. So my starting point for this graph is going to be a negative pi over 2 over 1. So this is the top level because cosine starts at the top or the bottom of your wave depending whether it's positive or negative. Because this is a positive cosine graph, it's going to start at the top of the wave. So from here, you bounce down until we come all the way up and there's going to be one cycle of our cosine graph. We've got to go the other direction, so we go down, down, down. You remember from yesterday we said we need five key points. So I need to add one more tick mark here. So I add another half. So this is one half plus one half is one. One more half, that's three halves. This is four halves, so this is five halves. So we created a horizontal shift. We took the entire graph and we shifted it left. You don't have to show this, but again, just remembering what your regular cosine graph looks like. This is cosine graph without any shifts. And what we did is we took that entire cosine graph and we shifted every point over one. One tick mark, which is pi over two. Make sure again that you're circling your starting point and that you are indicating oops, your arrows on your graph. All right, turn over to the back side. 
This time we have sine is equal to 1 half x minus pi. Our a value is 1. Our b value is 1 half. Our h is a positive pi and no k. So now your period is 2 pi divided by b, which is divided by 1 half. You want to be super careful here. 2 divided by 1 half is not 1. If you're entering this in your calculator, you have to put the 1 half in parentheses. 2 divided by 1 half is actually 4 pi. So then you take your period and you divide 4 pi by 4, which is going to give you 1 pi. Now remember, we use this information to set up the x-axis. So the distance, the length of one cycle is 4 pi. And I divide that 4 pi into 4 equal pieces, which means I'm going up by 1 pi each time. And we use this to set up our labels on the x-axis. Our amplitude is our a value, which is 1. Our lateral shift, it's a positive pi, which means we're going right pi. And no vertical shift. Most important thing is you look at your trig function. So now that we have our labels set up, sign, we ask ourselves, does sign start at 0 or 1? and sine is going to start at 0. So normally sine starts at 0, 0. We use the period in the interval to set up our x-axis. You multiply it by the amplitude. So 0 times 1 is still 0. And then I go right pi and then up none. So this is going to be my starting point. And then we remember that sine is always starting in the middle of the wave. So when I draw in my three levels, again, my amplitude is 1, which means there's a distance of 1 between each level, top, middle, and bottom. Sine starts by going up. We hit the top. We bounce the middle to the bottom. I need to add on one more tick mark so I can get those five key points. And there's one cycle. Again, I want to continue. I don't want to skip zero, so I hit the bottom, middle, bounces off the top, back to the bottom. When you're doing your graph, you want to have exactly two cycles. No more, no less. Five key points in each of them. Don't forget your arrows. All right, so our last one, our A is a negative one. Now we have a problem. You want to put a star next to this one. We can't identify our correct h value until it's in standard form, which means we want to take this one half and we want to pull it out. You're dividing by a fraction. So we end up with y equals a negative cosine one half. If I'm dividing a neg or one half from a negative one, this becomes a negative two pi. Remember, you're pulling one half out of each of these. So one half divided by one half is one. A negative one divided by one half is a negative two. Again, you want to be careful when you divide by fractions. Just like when I divided by a fraction up here, it wasn't maybe necessarily what you initially thought. This is a negative one divided by one half. If you're entering that in your calculator, you need to put parentheses around it. So here is the equation we want to reference. Your b is 1 half. Your h is 2 pi, always the opposite. So since it's minus 2 pi, it's really a positive 2 pi. k is 0. So we've got 2 pi divided by 1 half. We just went over this in the last problem. Why that ends up being 4 pi. We divide that into 4 equal pieces. So when I set up my x-axis, one cycle is going to go from 0 to 4 pi. Each tick mark is going to go up by 1 pi each time. My amplitude is 1. 
it's the absolute value, but because it's negative, I'm going to reflect your lateral shift is going to be that h value, which is going to be right 2 pi. And the vertical shift is the k. There is none, so there is no vertical shift. So I'm still going to go up to 1 and down to a negative 1. We have a cosine graph. When we think about cosine, cosine starts at the top of the wave, which is at 1. So I go through my transformations. I did this already that set up my x-axis. I multiply 1 by 1, which is still 1, but I reflect. So if I reflect from 1 down to a negative 1, and then I go right 2 pi. You want to make sure that you perform your transformations in the order of the list information. So you first multiply by the amplitude, and this is where you reflect, then go right then if you had a vertical shift, you would do this. So this is going to be my starting point. Now cosine normally starts at the top of the wave, but because we reflected, this is going to be the bottom of the wave. The amplitude is 1, which means the next level is at 0, and the top level is going to be at 1. Again, the amplitude is 1, so there's a distance of 1 between each level. We're at the bottom, so we work our way back to the top. What's we're at the top? Now we shifted right 2 pi, which was 2 tick marks, so we need to add 2 tick marks until we hit back to the bottom. Here's one cycle. Going the other direction. Sometimes we forget about 0. 0 is our tick mark, so don't forget about that. And here's our second cycle. All right, so that is going to be our two transformations for today, changing the period and changing horizontal shifts. And we are all done.